Cool. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for being here today again. I really appreciate it. Um, on behalf of all the suppliers that we're interviewing to try to gain some knowledge as far as what they're doing right now, what they have been doing, and what we're doing in the future to make live events safe and to make sure that you're comfortable with actually planning an event, a meeting, a group, 10 people, 50 people, I think is the max right now uh, in certain rooms. Um, Top Golf. And uh, Mary and I, we, we've gone back for a long time, and Mary's been throughout her career in, in various positions, but she's a 30-year-old vet, or a 30-year vet. Um, you're only 29, right, Mary? So, yeah, it's me like, what, 36 now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so a 30-year vet here in the industry, and then also 10 years celebrating at Top Golf. Um, she's a contributing writer to uh, MPA, MPI and the uh, Daily Herald Business Letter. Um, and which article did you get the 300 likes on that one time? Um, I don't remember. I think it was actually a, a, just a, a post with my dog, but I did get 300 likes on Facebook. So I consider that like a big deal. Big deal. You are a pretty big deal. Um, so Mary, I, I didn't know you did this. Like you hand raised four orphan goslings in 2020 and hopes to raise more in 2021. So I guess we can call you the goose whisperer, right? Yeah, you wouldn't believe it, but those Canada geese are wonderful. And if anybody wants more information on Canada geese, I'm happy to share it. But uh, yeah, they're incredible animals and I, I never knew it. I thought they were disgusting, filthy pigs, but they're actually amazing. Well, I know you're also a big skier and you patrol the mountains up there in Wisconsin. And uh, when you're not even doing that, you're, you, you know, you will find Mary up in Wisconsin snowing down some hill. Um, so let's get started here today. I've got this up, this on the screen. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Jim Grillo, uh, CMP. Uh, I am the uh, president of HereChicago.com. It's an online resource for meeting and event planners. Uh, Mary and Top Golf happen to be a great loyal listing member on herechicago.com. Uh, so if you need to find her, you could just go to this little search button here and then type in Top Golf Schomburg and you'll find Mary. And you could you could actually email her directly right here or if you want to plan an event with her. Um, you could do so right here. Hit submit, goes right to her email. All right. So let me get out of this screen share here. Okay, so um, let's let's start things off here, you guys. Uh, right now, stay on mute. Um, we'll let you answer your questions in the text in the uh, chat box. And then um, uh, Francine will uh, let us know uh, what those questions are toward the end. So we got a quick 30 minutes here. Um, so let's rock and roll. Mary, so what have you been up to the last 10 months here, 11 months? So uh, we, we, along with everybody else, we closed for 100 days, um, which was pretty rough. I had to furlough my team. Um, and then uh, I had a sales team of 10 here at Top Golf. Um, and uh, after, after those initial 30 days, we sadly, like many other people, had to let go um, of a big part of my team. Um, when we reopened on June 15th, uh, we opened a little slow. People were tentative to come on out, but because we're outdoor and because we're naturally socially distant, something crazy happened and we exploded. So quickly I brought back on three of my team members and an external, um, and then two additional team members uh, were able to join. So right now I am, I've got the majority of my team back um, and we are, because again, we were socially distanced and distanced, um, and we had a lot of those procedures and standards already in place. It was a, it was a fairly easy transition for us. Um, we're super excited to get back into phase four where we can do 50 people per room. Um, so on my third floor, that brings my, um, one event capacity up to, I think 352 which is huge. People can't do that because we're mainly outdoor and we are open year round and we have heaters and a lot of our spaces, most of our spaces integrate with the outdoors with the sliding glass walls. We are able to host more than usual. 
So we, we uh-huh. fundraisers right now are out of control. I just booked uh, the Lori's Children's Hospital and Miracle Network yesterday. So pretty excited about that. It's a nice. big feather in our cap. And, and we're getting, we're seeing some of our more high profile um, fundraising groups coming in. So super thrilled because, you know, in the nonprofit world, you still have to raise revenue to keep your doors open. So those fundraisers are not going away. Well, you know, the first time I saw the concept of Top Golf, it was on a HBO special called Entourage, and these guys, the, all these actors, were hitting golf balls off the third floor, and I said, "Oh my God, this is awesome!" So I love that, and and you're poised to do very well, I think, because uh, indoor outdoor type venues are extremely trendy right now. Whether you're a rooftop, a terrace, or any kind of room that has open walls. So tell us a little bit more about those open walls. So we've got a lot of outdoor space. So we have um, uh, quite a few, 102 hitting bays um, and each hitting bay is outdoor. It is covered from the elements and heated. We've got three infrared, uh, three banks of infrared heaters on every single bay. Um, in addition, we've got Let's see, three outdoor patios. So we've got a huge outdoor patio on our first floor with staging um, and some covered area. And that can host over 200 people just in that space alone. I've got a second floor uh, terrace uh, and a third floor, an additional third floor patio. So we're three floors with uh, 34 bays on each floor. Um, In all of those spaces, they're either sliding walls or garage doors from the bays to the outdoor space. Uh, that can really increase the capacity. And it really, a lot of people um, feel very comfortable being indoor, outdoor right now. Um, And then our indoor space that we have, again, we feature those sliding glass walls. So you can really bring the outdoor inside. Yeah, those heaters in the bays, um, I've experienced that before. It was 20 degrees, it was about three years ago um, where they just rose the door and they had the the heaters right above you. So, I mean, you still want to wear, you know, like a a sweater or a a sweatshirt or something, but I'll tell you any time. So what is the, the amount of degrees, let's say if it's zero out, do you close top golf at that point or what is the temperature that you close? No, we, we, we don't have a set temperature because it's not really the temperature that gets us. It's the wind. So when they build the top golf, they align it to face in the direction of the prevailing wind. So the winds are always behind us. Um, so once in a while it, it switches because uh, it is Chicago, but for the most part, we are not affected by uh, the wind. We like to say that we've engineered the, um, the, the elements out of the building. So when it's 20 degrees, it'll be about 50 in the T on the T line. That's what we call um, like a level as a T line. Um, and then if you are in a space with all the spaces have granite tables. So granite tables uh, really absorb the heat. And so you can put your hands on the, on the table and warm up that way. All of our soft seating, because it's radiant heat, it's not blowing hot air on, on you. It's actually warming up the, the area below you. And where, you know, so it's like radiant heat. Um, and so when you sit on one of the bays or in the soft seating, it's like a heat seater in your car. And it freaks people out because they don't expect it. They're like, are there heat heat seaters in these couches? Like, no, it's because of the radiant heat. So it's a it's a really neat thing to experience if you haven't. And during the winter, what we like to say, people go, oh, isn't it cold? Well, yeah, it's cold, but you've been cooped up for so long. It's really nice to get that deep breath of fresh air. Um, if you're, we just suggest that people dress comfortably, wear comfortable shoes. I like to wear gloves. But a huge overcoat isn't uh, isn't necessary. A fleece or a golf jacket is is pretty standard. If it's like 30, 40 degrees out, which we would normally think is pretty cold, we'll see people out there in t-shirts all the time. How do you get past the question where people have in their minds that they need to be a golfer to go to Top Golf? <laughs> what a great question. So I've literally golfed zero times in my whole life. <laughs> I've worked every golf outing under the sun. I can talk the talk, but I certainly cannot walk the walk. I don't know if you can see it. TGSB. My husband bought these for me during COVID. These are golf clubs. They are, what kind are they? They're Callaway clubs. I've never. Nice covers. 
Thank you. It's a little go for something. I've never used them. I've never been on a golf, uh, a green grass um, uh, course in my whole life, other than to sponsor a hole or drive the golf cart. Uh, so if you can uh, hold a club, that's really all you need to be able to do. So if you can play putt putt, awesome. Golf is an adaptive sport. So if you've got the use of one arm or you don't have the use of your legs or, you know, there's, it's so adaptive. Um, my son is an, a, a, he's a pretty decent golfer and he's cerebral palsy. So um, you don't need to have any skills whatsoever to really enjoy the game. But our, our avid golfers really love it too, because um, they, you can come in and work on your short game. Doesn't that sound like I know what I'm talking about? You can work on your short game or your, or your chipping um, and really enjoy the game too. My husband gets really mad because he is an avid golfer. And because I have strategy and no ego, I can beat them a lot of the time. They don't like that. Well, I'm living proof that you don't need to be a golfer and go there because I love top golf. I absolutely yeah. love top golf. It's, it's a way to get your group together, um, to be able to talk. The, you know, the nice thing too, it's kind of luxurious because you've got those little boots in front of before you go to tee off. So, and you got the heater on you, you got, uh, you get to see what people are doing. You know, you see the swing and the monitor and everything else. So, but the food is outstanding there too. And the service has been the best that I've ever seen uh, at Top Golf. Thanks, Jim. We do like kind of old school um, front and back waiters. So we call them bay hosts and runners. So we've got the bay hosts that never leave the tee line, which is like the floor. Um, and then and then they've got the little um, the pads that what are they called? The POS pads, you know, the um, iPads and so they order their drinks and and food and beverage and then they're run out and so um, again we don't want to leave those guests unattended on the tea line so uh, the us older folks that remember front and back waiters will know exactly what I'm talking about. So you are uh, you're selling groups right now what are some of the questions that you're getting from your clients right now? Um, so of course they want to know about our health and safety standards. And so I've got a video that I send out and we, and we, we do, um, remind everybody that every T is at 11 feet from T to T. Um, so right there, we're keeping in those tables in groups of six, a max of six, uh, um, in the table. Uh, so that's pretty neat. We do have, uh, hanging, um, clear, we call them shower curtains, but they're, they're curtains, clear curtains that separate every single bay from the other. Um, we do sanitize every single thing that is a shared piece of equipment, whether it's um, the screen or the monitor in the bay, which is a touch screen. Of course, all the clubs, um, that curtain, everything is wiped down and sanitized. Um, we've already had, we already sanitize all balls in between every single use. And that's something that we've been doing since day one. So that's not something that we really had to shift. When it comes to um, big groups, bigger groups, um, what we really try to focus on um, avoiding any congregation of people. So we don't wanna have a registration table. So pre-registration is important. Um, we do staggered uh, arrival times. We have a very specific socially distant buffet if that's if people are comfortable with that. Um, so what that means is we'll have a server or two, um, a, a buffet attendant serving the food. We've got uh, the shields in the front and you know what we used to call those, the sneeze guards, but we don't, we stay away from those names now, but we've got the food shields in front and then we use stanchions so that the guests are not actually not approaching. Again, throwing it back a little old school, we're asking one bay at a time to join us at the buffet, just like it, we used to do in weddings, um, so that we're not having those big group congregations or uh, congreg congregating areas. If there's goodie bags, we do ask that we um, pre-assign those and we'll deliver those at the end of the event for each bay. And then we, again, ask that people stay in groups of six. Doesn't mean you can't walk around, but we don't wanna see a group of 10 somewhere. If someone moves into your bay, we just ask that that other person move to another bay. So it does lend itself nicely to networking um, while we're uh, maintaining those um, standards set by and mandates by the state. So what kind of uh, live events are contacting you? Um, are they social groups right now? Um, I've heard that's a pretty big trend right now. It's going to be social, like you said, fundraiser, fundraisers and so forth. Huge influx of social events. 
huge. So we used to be like a 65, 35, 65 corporate, 35 social that has completely shifted to about 80 social, 20 corporate. So huge shift in that. Um, but fundraisers are big right now. Um, we don't really do weddings, but we have seen a really nice influx of our, our mitzvahs. So that's not something we've seen in the past. And I think people are more comfortable um, doing things a little differently because, you know, in the mitzvah world, we, they, we wanted yeah. to do things very traditionally with the cocktail hour and the introduction and, and um, ceremonies and things, but they're shifting just so that they can get their guests together and, and celebrate uh, the mitzvah. And it's nice that we can provide that um, different area or different space or opportunity for them. That's awesome. So, so you're, you're an actual uh, certified uh, sales coach. Yeah. Um, when, when selling, what's the most important thing for you to get that point out to your, your planners? So um, the, the sales uh, process that we use or philosophy uh, is called the Tyson Group. And it's a predictable process. And that predictable process yields predictable results. But the very first step in the process is speaking to your client briefly about something they're interested in, right? And we're providing value because we are a premium product and, and along with the premium product comes a premium investment. And so we do a lot of our time showing the value of our product. Um, and so that's really, that's really the crux of our philosophy is connecting with the guests in something that they are interested in. Briefly. Other, other than other than social trends, do you see any other type of trends that I might be missing asking you right now? Um, the big shift again from green grass to tournaments is a big deal. The fundraisers, whether it's um, chamber fundraisers or those those organizations that rely on uh, raising revenue to stay afloat, is is I think the big shift that we're seeing right now. Um, corporate spending is down, of course, we all know that. Travel is down. Um, we're seeing small increments of change, but not big. Um, right now, we're we're focused on calling all of our, our, our bigger groups that rescheduled or, or put their events on hold um, and just letting them know of our health and sa safety standards and how we can really try to solve that problem for them because we don't want them to lose their deposits. I mean, not that they would, but we would rather have them come out and enjoy some some fresh air with us. So in the future, do you, do you see that you might not get as many of those business groups in there due to, you know, did, so in, in the past, did you have a lot that were coming in from those, those offices in Naperville? Um, and do you see a trend slightly going downward for that and more social? You know, I don't think so. I think it has really opened up our market share in the social arena um, to people who would not have come to us before. But, you know, we lived through 2001, 2008, where we, we kept asking that question, will it come back? And I think the question, the answer is yes, it will come back. It might take a little longer this time. Our landscape might look a little different. We might, you know, be wearing our masks all the time. Um, but I do think that slowly it will come back. Um, we're not seeing a lot of transients. So, you know, the CBBs have kind of shifted their focus on that over 50 um, radius that they're attracting people in. And they're really shifting to um, the, the local consumer to spend their dollars in their local community. And we're seeing the same thing. And we are seeing some of our corporates come back, but this area that we're in right now um, is the new kind of Rosemont area. So it's called 90 North or the, the uh, Viridian. Um, and so we have a tremendous growth um, here, right here in our area. So we see nothing but incredible positive growth in this specific area. So whoever picked out this, we were like the anchor here in this Motorola campus. So uh, our real estate guy had a really nice long-term plan. So I can't, I don't know if I can say the same for everybody, but yeah. Top Golf is situated really well. In fact, I had a, a bar mitzvah client call me and she just wants to bring her family in on the 27th, which is a week from Saturday. I've got two spaces open. We're almost sold out. Wow. That's so great that, to hear. That's, that's shifting too. So our booking window is a little longer now just because there's so much um, interest 
the, our social was a, a very short booking window, like a 14 day booking window, just because of availability, we're changing those patterns and those behaviors to a longer booking window because we don't have an option, which is interesting, you know? Yeah. And I, I think I might've referenced Naperville before. Um, you used to be at Naperville and that's how I know you. And you recently moved over to uh, uh, Schomburg, which that location opened a little over a year or so ago. Yeah, um, yeah, just over a year ago. So we don't even have a year under our belt yet. We opened in September. Um, our softer periods are, are the, the one and the two, what yeah, we're in right I now. Um, in November is a little, a little soft, but we never really, it was like getting a Maserati and we, we didn't even get to take it, you know, on the highway. I like that analogy. So um, we're just starting, we're really looking forward to the summer to, to have our, our spaces available again. Cool. Um, hey, Francine, did we get any questions on the chat? Let's see. No specific questions. No, not yet. Okay. Um, well, you're doing really good, Mary. So <laughs> yeah, has, it's very interesting. Has... Can I ask a question? Yeah. 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 You know, is is uh, your location now the one that used to be in Warrenville on, uh, oh my God, what's the name? Yeah, we, ha we had Prairie a location. Road? Yeah, we had one in um, Wooddale, actually. So it was right in that, you know, uh, right in that corner that was Itasca. Oh, you're thinking of Naperville. I'm sorry, that's the other direction. Right, the one that's in War. it's actually in Warrenville. You know, or well, our mailing address is Naperville, yeah. but right across okay. the street is Warrenville. So again, like the Arista is on that one side of the street, that's Naperville, and okay. the other side of the street is Warrenville. So you're still there. So I've actually, I was there for four years. I was first in the Wooddale venue, um, which we have transitioned to this venue. So we combine the two. So I was in uh, Wooddale for, I believe, four years, and then over to Naperville for four years. And I've been here about a year and a half. Okay. So, here's my home. That's where I got my start in the industry. Uh, so I'm, I'm thrilled to be back home. I'm, I'm in Batavia. So I'm familiar with, uh, with the one that's in the, you know, Warrenville, Neighborville. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I saw a, uh, Lori had asked, how can we get in touch with Mary? Um, and you can get in touch with Mary. If you go to here, Chicago.com, uh, search for Top Golf Schomburg and you'll be able to email her directly through there. Um, other than that, I can also put her information in the uh, chat box. No, just thank you so much for the opportunity um, uh, with uh, Here's Chicago because we're so corporate. Um, I, I wanna let everybody know that we sent all the analytics down to our IT department, our TI department, um, to just analyze the Here's Chicago analytics to make sure that, again, that there was value. And they did come back and say, wow, this is, this is a powerhouse of a, a site. So we approve. And uh, that's why we're still with Here Chicago. Fantastic. Well, even if you weren't, we would remain friends. Oh, for sure. Oh, here's a little fun fact. Um, Jim and I, Jim helped me get my motorcycle license. I, I took his little moped. <laughs> <laughs> we practiced in a parking lot, and then we went and got the our, my license. So we're like motorcycle buddies. <laughs>